David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another ink review. Uh, it's an ink in a unique bottle, and it's an ink which has something most inks don't have, drama. Well, a little drama, but I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the ink I have for you today is from the Indian brand Krishna, and it is called Pakaza. And thanks go out to Krishna for providing this ink for review. If you're not familiar with Krishna, it's based out of India. The gentleman who runs the company is Dr. Neethu Shrikmar. Uh, the good doctor is an anesthesiologist at a government hospital in the Kerala region of India, which is on the western coast of India's southern tip on the shores of the Arabian Sea. In 2010, the doctor began making fountain pen ink. And while he has team members to help out with the packaging and the business side of things, the process of creating Krishna inks is all done by the doctor himself. What I have for you today is a newly introduced limited edition ink from Krishna called Pakaza, which means pure in Persian. But many people know the word as the name of a popular Indian film from the early 1970s, but the ink is not named for the movie. Now, I mentioned there was a little drama surrounding this ink. Well, not the ink itself, but the bottle. And how Krishna handled the situation was an example of what I feel is the right way to deal with an issue. You'll see here in a moment, but the bottle is very unique. Uh, the story, as I understand it, is that Krishna had sourced these bottles from a supplier who had represented them to be a generic design. They purchased the bottles and then proceeded to promote the product launch as a corp company would normally do. Uh, right before they launched the product for pre-orders, they had sent me this bottle that I have here for review. However, the day after the launch, they were notified that a Japanese company by the name of Gecko Design actually had patented the design of this bottle. Uh, it had won a number of design awards back in 2018. So Krishna's supplier had misrepresented the bottle as being generic. So literally a day later, after they had started the pre-orders, Krishna halted those pre-orders and pulled the ink off the market. And they were very open about it with the community and communicated in a, a number of different ways. Uh, and it was very refreshing. Uh, and everyone agreed that Krishna basically was given a bit of a raw deal, but they did the right thing in pulling the product rather than intentionally infringing on the design of another company. Um, after about a week, Krishna announced that they had worked out a deal with Gecko Design and that this deal would allow this limited edition ink to move forward. Okay, enough backstory. Let's actually show you this bottle. Uh, there are some things I care for about it, as well as some areas of concern. And oh yeah, it also comes with some fountain pen ink in it, so I will be showing you that as well. In order to take a look at this bottle and ink, please join me over here at camera two. The ink arrives in this tin. Uh, it's reminiscent to me of something tea would come in. Uh, the bottle was well protected in here. Uh, that there was some nice foam padding around the outside, uh, as well as some padding here in the lid. And then we have the bottle. Now, it's a little difficult to see what's going on here. Uh, one, you can see the reflection of my lights in here, so that looks really nice. Uh, but uh, this is a picture of what the bottle will look like most of the time for you. It's a bottle which uses the principles of atmospheric pressure and equalization in order to have a large reservoir. Um, it's an interesting design. Now, with the ink sloshing around here, it kind of covers the entire inside. So it, uh, it, the, the glass is a little bit clear here, uh, and the, it is a dark blue ink. Now, I do have a couple of concerns about this bottle. Um, one thing is if the level here in the arm gets too low, and you kind of manually tip it over to fill it up, the pressure coming from the other side will keep the arm completely filled, and then when you open the top, it'll be filled to the rim here. I speak from experience. Experience. I did that and made a bit of a mess. Um, the other thing that concerns me is this arm itself. While the glass on this bottle seems sturdy enough, there are times when ink caps on bottles can get a bit crusty and take a bit of effort to open. 
Um, the tendency with this bottle is to hold on to the main chamber uh, and then open the cap. The problem is that if you are doing that, you're exuding a great deal of force to twist open the cap, and then the pressure point is right here at this joint. Now, I'm uncertain uh, how much force it would take to literally rip that right off, um, which would be a bad thing. Uh, you'd have broken glass and then the ink would be pouring out. Now, who knows? This glass might be very strong and breaking it off might not be an issue. Um, I've made it a point when opening this bottle to hold it from below like this rather than only holding on to the main chamber. So now let's actually take a look at what's inside this unique bottle, which is a very nice blue ink. Here it is on some 52 gram Tomoe River paper. Um, you can see that it's a nice dark blue and on these heavier applications, there is a fair amount of sheen that is on here. So this is with a Q-tip and this is with more of a smear. And you can see that there is a hefty amount of uh, sheen on here as well. Uh, and in regard to some shading or whether it uh, bleeds through, uh, it does just a tiny bit, but this on this particular page, I do apply a, a rather generous amount of ink. So that's to be expected. This is what the ink looks like on a swatch. Um, I find it to be fairly similar to something like Diamine, Skull and Roses. Uh, then it looks somewhat similar to Venta's Blue Blood or even KWZ's Sheen Machine, which I think has a little bit more sheen to it, or even something like Diamine Jack Frost. So here we have Krishna Pakaza. Um, this top portion here, I wrote with a Pilot Parallel, this 2.4 millimeter. Um, and this is Rhodia 80 gram paper. Um, I find the ghosting and bleed to be low. Uh, even with this rather heavy application, you can see here that there's very, very little ghosting and no bleed through whatsoever. Uh, I'd say shade is rather low. I find this to be a rather saturated ink, um, but the sheen on this ink is rather high. Okay, in regard to pens, I have three here, two of which are going to be reviewed in the somewhat near future. Um, in regard to one with a fine nib, I have this one here, which is one of the recent releases from Narwhal, which is one of their piston fillers, and this is their clear demonstrator for the piston filler. So we have a Narwhal piston filler. And this is a fine steel nib. Next up is a very unique pen from a custom manufacturer by the name of Wet n Wise, which is out of Belgium. And this model here is called the Albert. Um, I saw this described or heard it described as looking like Pippi Longstocking Sock. And I think that that was an appropriate uh, description for this pen. But again, it's going to be coming up in a review here in the somewhat near future. So we have here the Wet n Wise. And this pen is called the Albert. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And finally, we have a pen from Pilot, which is the Pilot 912. Um, and this particular Pilot does have a music nib. And as you see, I kind of like to keep my stickers on my Pilot pens, especially the ones that look somewhat similar. It helps me remind me what nib is on there. So I like to keep the stickers. And as you can see here, this says MS for music nib. So we have a Pilot 912. And this is a music nib. Now, I do have a whole video on music nibs, or, um, but as you can see here, there is actually two tines as opposed to just one. But yeah, if you want to learn all, learn all about music nibs, you want to check out that video that I did on those a while back. In regard to a writing sample, I like to have a theme. 
Uh, and so I thought the theme for uh, this particular ink review would be questions that are basically common that I receive on a regular basis. Especially when I do Q and A's, there seem to be a few questions that always come up uh, and that I have answered over time, but I thought that I would answer those three here just to have them all in one place. And one of the very first questions that uh, I receive, or one question I receive a lot, especially via email, uh, is about uh, pen identification. And my generic answer I give to that is, Uh, when people ask me about identifying certain pens, uh, I generally tell them that if they would care to have a pen identified, some of the best places to go are either the Fountain Pen Network um, bulletin board or the Fountain Pen subreddit, which I find is a really useful uh, source of information as well as having some very useful and helpful members. Okay, next question and the next pen. The next pin is this Wet and Wise Albert. And a very common question I get is, how did I get the name Fig Boot? I said that the Fig Boot name is a reference to a book by the Canadian author and illustrator Graham Romeo. Uh, for the full story behind that, you'd want to watch my very first Q&A, Q&A number one. And then finally, I always get asked a lot about how I got started in fountain pens. And so I always say... I got started with fountain pens on a recommendation of a coworker who encouraged me to purchase a fountain pen, and I did so. Uh, and that pen was a Lamy All Star. Okay, I find the flow of this ink to be a bit on the medium side. Uh, in regard to drying time, I find that on both a fine and a medium nib, it dries between 15 and 30 seconds on this Tomoe River paper. 
Let's go ahead and do a water test here. Get some water on here. And while that's sitting, we'll take a look at the chromatography. Um, I always enjoy, I know I always say this, but I always enjoy doing this chromatography and I like seeing how the inks separate out. And in this case, you can see that the uh, Pacaza has a heavy amount of kind of gray to it and then some lighter blue and some darker blue. Uh, and then this is what the chromatography, once it dries, ended up looking like. And like I said, there's a large amount of gray in here as well, besides the different shades of blue. And in regard to water being waterproof, this ink doesn't claim to be waterproof. And you can see that um, uh, the paper started to disintegrate a little bit. But for the most part, um, I mean, it's not too bad, but it didn't hold up that much. Um, as a conclusion, I said here that Krishna Pakaza doesn't always or doesn't just only have a unique bottle. It is a nice deep blue which behaves well and has a heavy dose of sheen. So um, this bottle is going to retail for $18 when it hits the market. And there it is, like as I mentioned, a limited edition uh, of a total of 2,000 bottles. And once they are gone, they will be, go they will be gone for good uh, because the plan right now is for Krishna to not uh, produce any other than the 2,000 that they're going to produce. So I think it's something that's worthwhile. It's a unique bottle that's, uh, that, that's very interesting, has an interesting story behind it. And then the ink as a whole is decent as well and I care for it. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.